Welcome back everyone to the concluding episode of Let's Play Dominions 4 as Shinyama in the 7 person free for all series. And today, of course, it had to be this way. I'm joined by both I seen you before and Sam. First I seen you before, how are you doing? I'm good, I'm good, and you? I'm doing good. I'm excited to do this post-mortem episode. Um Sam, how are you doing? Well, we uh it went better than I thought it would. <laughs> That's your recap of the series, if you had to give the TLDR. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. <laughs> Too long, didn't read. We did well. Um, better than expected. Well, let's just go through the stuff that happened first, and then um, we can talk about, basically, our thoughts on the whole entire series as a whole. So, congratulations everyone on getting this far and somehow managing to survive my superior forces. Has been a fun game and has seesawed a lot. Thanks for the game and well played. Really classy of Das to do this. I wouldn't expect anything less. Um, I've sent like a similar message, but only via diplomatic channels, as in email. <laughs> email became the main diplomatic discourse. Although I have to say now I have. I don't know if you guys have started watching other people's videos because the the like. The curtain has been lifted. <laughs> it's free reign. There's no more. Um, what is it called when you blockade something or what? Is it? Embargo. Yes, the embargo. The embargo is lifted. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> so we we can watch anything now. All right. So Bishop of Eldegrade claimed the throne of Winter. This is uh, Aramor. So they snuck in a throne on the very very last turn. <laughs> And we do have a few battles here. Um, Karnag, is this an important one? No, this is just us controlling this. Um, Zim, Zimria is the same thing. Oh, this one actually... Oh yeah, the Shura accidentally took some Bakemono shows with him, just because I wasn't really paying attention, but I guess we'll go to that battle real quick. Uh, Sam, you want to call this one? Or really doesn't matter who, but this can be over so quick. Yep, the... Uh... They, they beat him up. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we'll, we'll triple this one. So we lost some Bakemono shows. It's just my fault, though. We're like, what the heck is this Atlantean Michelin <laughs> doing here? <laughs> Seems out of place. Uh, very out of place. <laughs> it's in the wrong spot. Okay. Um, now, we did have an attack in Griffin Spires. This was just Vanheim scouting. We won't show that one. Um, Omicria. Looks like Vanheim attacked here. Ulm, but... Doesn't even matter scout. what what even happened. Uh, it looks like Olm maintained it. Yeah, it's, it's just, just a scout. Okay, we have Nashin. This one is. Oh, we succeeded against. What? Well, this is actually a Vanyarl. Yeah, he tried to fag it out. Yeah, that's right. Actually, this is might be interesting to. It was Nashin, right? Yeah. Uh, let me look at this one. I seen you before. I think we were kind of talking about this when you want to call this one. Yeah, yeah. I actually realize I have not seen the turn. <laughs> oh, uh, okay. So yeah, but it's it's okay. He's, he's basically fucked out as <laughs> yeah. a fuck. Yes. He's one of the heroics as well. Yeah, so he has an impressive 19 defense skill. Mm -hmm. Now, if what I'm suspecting is correct... Oh, there it goes. <laughs> he already lost his... Uh... He, he caused too many spells. He's at very oh. high fight. Flight. Like, just, just take a look at his 50? fatigue if you want. I think yeah. we've given him both of these battle wounds. I don't think he had battle wounds prior. <clears throat> oh, I don't God. think so. <laughs> he lost an eye. That's yeah, terrible. so he basically flew in, then uh, your Bakemonos took out their katanas and chopped him up. Okay, this is the confusing thing to me. When I look here, it doesn't say that he died. Did he just he fly off? Die. Okay, yeah, he flew he, off he the flew field. Off, yeah. Okay, all right. So some other scouting thing at Oblock, doesn't matter. Um, let's cover, let's cover this, <laughs> the elephant in the room in a moment, but there's a, a few more battles to get through. Junal Forest, I guess this one doesn't really matter, but, uh, just like, I'll let either of you guys kind of talk about what happens here. It's, it's basically just a huge army against a small one. Elm lost. Yeah, we'll do triple for this, but. Not really much to say. Yeah, this is just province defense, I believe. Oh, other than statues are getting nerfed. <laughs> oh yeah, Dominion's 5. Well, let's hold on semi, semi nerfed. Well, not Remember? Really nerfed, but, semi nerfed. <laughs> but the, um, but the gen isn't happening anymore. That's great. <laughs> yeah. Are they gonna stop, um, 
well, let's get to that one uh, at the appropriate point. Because I'm intentionally skipping a battle here. <laughs> a Fizabor. I think that's the only one that matters, right? Okay, they also attacked us somewhere. Oh yeah, and here. So this is an appropriate point to talk about it. Basically, he landed, he did the glamour. He did his attack through glamour. Um, and then I guess he did the wizard's tower, I'm presuming. That drops a palisade, right? No, it drops a wizard's tower. Then how did he get a palisade in one turn? It's a spell, right? Was he building a palisade in there all this time? Can you build a palisade if it's not your territory? I don't think so. No, no. But there, there are events that happen that give palisades. Okay, maybe that. I haven't seen Vanheim's last turn. In fact, though, all in the timeline where we are right now, I mean, <laughs> in the real world timeline, um, we haven't yet posted the last videos. I think we're done. Just finished posting like turn forty-five or forty-six. Right. So we haven't seen other people's last few episodes. So I don't know what happens with here with him here. And it's, it's interesting. Oh, did I? I didn't show CERN. Did CERN happen last turn? I guess CERN happened last turn. Where our forces were defeated? Oh. S spoiler alert. Our, we had the um, the group of... Yeah, these guys. Who were in CERN and defeated. Yeah, so the fact that they're two away means that it must have happened last turn. I, I already don't remember. Alright, well, Good let's just <laughs> jump to the big one. Feasibor. This is the one where we were... Trying to take the, uh, the level two throne, throne of fortune or whatever. I'm gonna pause. We made a few miscalculations here. <laughs> I'm, a, I'm ashamed to say. Here's the force. This plus 38. That'll be very useful for us to uh, take it uh, to take into consideration as things move forward. Um, I, I seen you before. I'll give you the call on this one. Um, Sam, jump in whenever you want to. But I remember this battle. Yeah, so I did show you this one. And the main thing yeah. that we messed up with is uh, Yukinaga. So I'll go ahead and play this one, and you can point out the mistake we made. I'll be ready. So. Well, what do you know? <laughs> Yukinaga jumped into the... Middle of the fray. <laughs> no, but the thing is, he didn't. I think he didn't pass the moral check on uh, the elemental. And what what does this mean? So when you try to fly over to the rearmost, right? You go through every squad and you pass a moral check against them. If they win their moral check, you end up attacking them. If they lose the moral check, you move on to the next squad, and that keeps repeating until you can reach the rear squad. Okay, but we didn't have attack rearmost. We had for him attack large entities. Oh, so yeah, he, he ended up attacking, attacking the wrong large entity. Yeah, yeah. basically. Yeah. Okay, so we'll go back to moving forward. Oh, and then he's dead. So sad. This is not our yeah. dominion, so he is really dead this time. Yeah. Um, I, wouldn't, I would say the bugs form is kind of unneeded for this one. Thinking about it, what we really needed just was to probably focus on. We probably needed more point defense. To focus on defender stuff. Yeah, what I think the problem was that we had you can not He's Oh, we missed. We missed the conflict with the serpent. You no, know, he he routed really early. But like he was really doing a lot of damage. Early. Like, I think we got <clears throat> Fafnir down to like two hundred and twenty. Yeah, I should yeah. have been pointing that out. And then he routed. Yeah, and then this guy routed. He was doing a lot of damage with his dual axes of hate. Okay, so Fafnir's back here, and this is where it's going to become just a, a joke. He's now noticed back up to full. Because he gets, what, 10% back per turn? Yeah. 10%. <laughs> the, the only way to get rid of him at this point was is if we managed to... Uh, basically... Hit the fatigue something. Yeah, but we didn't have... But our fatigue wasn't... Ready but I have a question. If he's asleep, he doesn't regenerate? He does. No, no. If, he, if he's asleep, you critical hit him. Yeah, yeah. I see. Because I was thinking, his 38, like, it's so crazy, we're not even doing enough. 
Yeah, so this, this is going to go on for a while, basically. Like 50 damage per hit, so it would, he would Oh, uh, okay. So it would be possible to slowly grind him out. Well, it wouldn't even be grind. It would be like 50 hits at once. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Because um, a critical hit lets you hit another critical hit. And then it's four. Well, that, that's... It lets you do another hit. I mean, that's so. on... That's partly my fault because Sam... I mean, basically we were kind of juggling you guys out and then whoever was available the last... Uh, a couple of turns, last few turns, and Sam had talked about casting sleep, but then when I seen you before and I set up this battle, I forgot to, you know... It, it doesn't matter too much, because the thing is, it would be, um, it would be a bunch of dice rolls, and it wouldn't do too well. How much magic resistance does the Earth serve? Yeah, it's 24, no, 21. And the other thing is that the problem with sleep is that the, the majors are not in range. Right now. Yeah, we would have to push them up. And yeah. Would they have moved up on their own though? No. no, no. Mm. We would have to script it specifically. Um, mm. Honestly, sleep could have worked, but we oh. would need. Well, one thing we forgot to mention too is that at some point we cast. Uh, what is it? The yeah. spell? <laughs> Decaying. So basically, Decaying. Fafnir aged 200 years during this spell. It was even more than that, because he started off with like 300 and something, and he's already up to 500. I think it was like 390, yeah. almost 400. But by the end of the battle, it's like 700. And I, he aged like 400 years in this battle. <laughs> the problem is, he can live for another 1,000 more after that, so it wasn't effective. Unfortunately. Like, nothing we could do to this guy. The only thing that would have worked, it seems, is just sleep. Yeah, uh, unfortunately, we had astral so spells too, but... Astral. But we didn't have astral spells, so. We did have um, adepts of Iron Order, but it was a pain to mobilize them. Yeah, we wouldn't be able to mobilize them. Um, because the problem with is we would need... I would ideally, you would ideally want like 10 of them. So. Yeah, but uh, the thing is, if it wasn't for the turn limit, we still haven't lost. I don't even think it's a turn limit. Why do we route event? Oh, is it just a turn limit? It's the auto route. Ah, okay. It's funny. It's just, <laughs> it's just so funny. Huh? It's just is unkillable. And I don't yeah. think that he had this battle wound before the battle. I could be wrong. But he did gain another tier of experience. Not too surprising. He only had four, I think. And what, I mean, I'll have to go back in the video and watch, but I think it was... We, we should have Forge Flesh Eaters, if we had any. No, uh, we, we weren't able to. We wouldn't have the resources. Oh, do you have random Flesh Eaters lying around by no. random event? No. Oh. no. I don't think so. I think the thing which really would have helped us is if we had brought spiders from this ancient ruin... No. Yeah, that's a good point. The spiders have definitely helped out. Like, <laughs> might have scared the snake off. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Between spiders and snakes, I don't know. Uh, uh, I would say that if we had more time, we could have probably killed it fairly easily. There was a lot of ways to do it. It was just that we didn't have the time to. Actually. Yeah. There's a lot of ways to skin a cat, but unfortunately one of them is not with tweezers, which is kind of what we were doing there. Um, okay, so let's talk about the the end state of this game, because it is over, and there was a lot of discussion at the end, it's been a lot of fun. I have been exposed at least to the kind of, some of the diplomacy which was hidden, which I can talk about as well. Like, this whole thing with Airmore and Van Heim, and I, even I've been, the person whose videos I first went to immediately was Das Tactic, because I knew he would do really... Um, a thorough job with the diplomacy, and that's the thing I was most interested in. So I haven't seen the other videos yet. I've only seen a couple of his. But one of the interesting things to point out is Airmore, who ended up, you know, being the the thorn in our side. I'm not sure if we would have taken the Feasbor, maybe... Okay, once Scythia was lost, and once it was clear that we were going to lose that, I'm pretty sure some of my interest in the game faded. I can't speak for you guys, but I know that I wasn't I didn't. I really didn't care if we scripted things correctly after that point. Like <laughs> things were basically set the way they were going to be for the rest of the game, and that's uh, that's on me. Like that's not good entertainment for the for the viewers. But that's yeah. just how it was after forty five well, turns. Partially how the game is, and it kind of and you can see its effect on a lot of people. Where um, where once where one of the problems with a turn limit, like you say, you're going to stop here, is that. 
the game actually ends like five turns before that happens. <laughs> right. I mean, it's, you can kind of think of it like this happened even to Airmore without a possibility, without with a fixed deadline. Airmore would know that once they had their earlier defeat, despite not being killed off completely, they were out of the running because there was no way they could get back by turn 49. Maybe if we had 100 turns, they could. You can think of it the same way with Man or probably even Ulm. I, I remember that Ulm at some point kind of threw his weight behind me, knowing that he had no chance of getting it by turn 50, 49. Yeah. So... I mean, I understand the turn limit because it's, um, it, yeah, it's, it's know, crucial. It, it, ends, <laughs> it, ends, it ends the game, especially in these larger collaborations in a timely manner, but it does have its cost and this is one of them. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So what I was trying to say with Airmore though, is just the fact that Vanheim had encouraged them to become allied and that is, I presume, the reason why they never attacked Defeasibor, that they never went after Vanheim, because Vanheim on turn 38, this is the only diplomatic message that I that I really know of outside of the ones I was already a part of, because, you know, most of the diplomacy I was a part of with Man and everything. And this is actually coming from Man's side, so it's really, I have no idea what was going on with Agartha or Vanheim yet. I am only, again, just seeing things from Man's side. I know that, for example, later in the game, around turn 42 or whatever, that's when Man realized that we were the strongest, and he kept contemplating when to attack me. Which is not too surprising. That's what I would have expected out of Das. Um, too late. <laughs> yeah, so he, but the, the reason why he committed to Vanheim, it turns out, was because Vanheim committed to him. Vanheim said, okay, I had to... I had, like, it's either you or the undead, or... I, I don't remember the message exactly. I think that this is what happened. I could be mistaken. So I, I apologize if this was the wrong information, but it, I think that after Man got to Zimria, he was considering... He was always trying to keep this potential alliance with Vanheim open as a possibility so that they could turn on me. But Vanheim eventually said, you know what, that's it, man. I'm <laughs> taking the gloves off. I'm going after you. And I think that that's what com convinced Das to just go... to go for the throat. Um, no, I, no, that's why we ended up fighting each other for so long. Yeah, yeah, so what you didn't see is any conflict in the first... This area wasn't really contested by Vanheim, but I guess as man kept moving in... And man... Okay, so to get more into it, I, I want to talk about Airmore, more, but man actually at the point when they decided to either go to capture all the Vanheim land were torn about 50-50. They very nearly went to war with Agartha at that point. Which, it, which surprised me. <laughs> they would have died. <laughs> yeah, well, it would have been a distraction for Agartha, considering that they were already at war wow. with them. Wow. I think no, the, no, the, no, my, no. my children would have turned all those... Uh, no, no. <laughs> you have a, a, a massive barbecue. <laughs> it's, it would be... It would... This, like, I'm, I'm sorry. Like, no offense to man, but their equipment, it's basically like a child trying to stop a pig rig. <laughs> Okay, well, you, to put it bluntly, I guess. <laughs> okay, that's good to know. So man wouldn't have stood a chance anyways. In the, from that perspective, then, man did the right thing by taking the basically free territory. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Although, in some sense, him taking the free ter territory made me stronger because I had less to deal with with Vanheim. Because it's... Because with the goblins, we, we always win. <laughs> right, like in right. Like Lord of the Rings. <laughs> Now, I wanted to say with this about Airmore, Vanheim contacted Airmore and actually never got a response from them, which is funny because that's also the situation with I, with um, that I was, uh, how much, I'm trying to speak English, this is so hard sometimes, that was also what happened to me, that I would contact Air, Airmore, I would contact Sabouts, and I wouldn't really get any kind of response even when I told him I was going to attack into Ivermark, I just finally watched his video on that. That's the most recent one that just got published. I wanted to see... It, it wasn't the Ivermark, it was the turn before it. And he said, okay, Tortuga contacted me. And he said, let's just fight. Um, and then he put his units on patrol, which is what I said to do. But I had no idea he was going to do it. I had to just kind of trust, because he didn't <laughs> respond and confirm, you know? And and the Ooh. thing is, he, he did confirm, for example, he was going to go attack a Feasbor, and he never did. And it turns out Vanheim had the same situation, even though Vanheim was playing him against me. So the big message that I saw from Vanheim, that I don't know if they did this to other people, 
or just Aramor and Man, but they send a message to both Man and Aramor on turn 38 after the results of turn 38, after the, their defeat in Griffin Spires and my attack in Demerald Lake. They send a message saying that I, Shinyama, controlled eight points worth of thrones, and that I had a level three mage on all the ones I hadn't claimed, or a level three priest on all the ones I hadn't claimed, ready to capture them, which put me, by their estimation, on turn 38, five turns away from a victory. Which we can see is just clearly not true. <laughs> it's just some high-class bluffing. Um, I, we had Fever Fens, Vokan, Saboria under control, and I think those were the only three, right? Mm -hmm. I guess uh -oh. you can count Emerald Lake because we had acquired that one at that point. So that's one point, one point, two points. He was right, though, that two everyone points. did have to be careful, though, because... Sure, is... but the fact that we... We didn't have any priests available to take Fever Fens at that point, either. So, so it was a very strong statement, but it, it just wasn't true. Like, I'm just surprised nobody sat there and did the math and could see that we didn't have Scythia. This is well before we had Scythia. Turn 38, we were probably, like, in Seneca. We look, we look big, though. We do look big. Yeah, that's true. So maybe if people just don't investigate the throne situation closely, they don't they don't see it. Yeah, but go, we only controlled... We only had access to four thrones at that point. And I say only, but... Just it puts us at six points versus eight. That's a su substantial difference. I'm pretty sure you were the one with the most effort in mapping out the thrones and checking everything. Yeah, well, that, that makes sense. Giant, <laughs> that giant map was pretty meticulous. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, that, I like those kind of aids though. Um, okay, so that that was a big thing. Airmore at that point, I suppose, stopped listening to anything I had to say, and started just building up the forces to you know eventually stop me now i haven't even said it yet have i who won the game did i mention it i don't think i did no, actually but no, the end state not. is that the person with the most thrones wins and shinyama has the most points so we are the winners of the seven person free-for-all series of dominions four a round of applause Dun, 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 so um it's it was a it's a hell of a game man <laughs> and i don't yeah. really feel like we won um as like victory to me would have been taking a fees bore and keeping scythia i do we're goblins <laughs> that's why you don't play with turn limits yeah well we're i'm glad goblins. we did i'm still happy that's we did <laughs> we don't need we don't need to win cleanly we, we we have sneaky troops so a few things i want to talk about before i jump into just letting you guys have the floor and just talk about whatever you want about the whole series a few questions because um a lot of people in the comments now that i'm looking on other videos but actually on my video on my turn might have been 44 or so 45 when people realized how strong airmore had become by literally doing nothing like afk wait for five turns, come back, and then you have a massive army, people really started to get this impression that Airmore is overpowered as a nation. And I want to talk to you guys because you guys are both experts on this. And I know that somebody even linked, or not linked, but mentioned that there was some person's statistics on Dominions 4 put Airmore and Agartha as the top two win rates for multiplayer games. Yes. Um, so... Let's just go in order. I seen you before you first. What are your thoughts on Airmore and 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 Agartha and just the nations that were at work in this game in general? Well, it's very simple. For Agartha, we used to be a pretty disfavored nation, kind of like limping around. Where you know, is it really a nation or is just full of gimmicks? And then. Patch up did came and gave him a lot of national births and uh, spells, and it became super powerful. Yeah. Oh, they also discounted them. They originally were too costly, but they also made them pretty economical. Yeah. So it became super duper powerful all eras, and then moving forward for Ermo, he, it's it's been known since Dominions one that Ermo is overpowered. It's made to be overpowered. It's made to be a nation, but you should definitely gang up on because it's going to kill everyone. 
Yeah. It's just the nature of the nation itself. Yeah, it's... It has all the advantages of a free spawn nation. That's why late age relay is strong. That's why Pangea is strong because we can spam mana up to some extent. But Ermo just takes the cake because it, it just, it, it blights everything around you. No one wants to just kill you and have nothing, nothing back in return. It's pointless. Mm, it's it's why you have to do. It's why you have to gang up on them because if Ermor was actually, if Ermor was actually a more proactive player and, and, I would say honestly knew more of what he was doing, he probably would have been able to dis- take over. He would have probably been the first or second most powerful nation, flat out. Even after and and he, Ermo is known to be attacking several fronts at the same time and still getting advantage if you know yeah. what they're doing yeah hmm. yeah it's really really if this was a more experienced player like if i or i seen you before was playing this game could have been very bad for everyone because they didn't attack her i see so. okay well that's really good to know um now um, let's you talk about agartha how would you rank the other nations like regardless of how they started because obviously man is had such a terrible start, but how how are the other nations? Um, I'll try to grab. Whoops, not nation overview, but I'll try to grab the uh, pretender so we can see which ones. So maybe how how's man? How's Alm? How's the card? Let's just recap now that the series is over. Okay, so basically something along the lines of number one, Ermo, number one slash number two, Asphodel, or number two slash number three slash number one would be Agartha. Elm would come to a close second. Then Vanheim would also be on the same level as Elm. Then you step in, then Man is lost. Wow, okay. so Shinyam is actually a better nation than Man. No, no, I, we went from, yes, in, yes, yes. Yes, okay. Man is yes. terrible. That's unfortunate. <laughs> Unless you're crafty, unless you're crafty. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, man can very only win via diplomacy and, and being very, very good. Like, crafty good. <laughs> he prob- and this was probably the worst choice for Dust to actually choose. I see. Well, I, I'm glad he chose it because, okay, the original premise of this game was to have fun. I Okay, looking at the choices, the way you're saying it, of the nations that were not picked for this game... Who is the most uh, powerful nation that was not picked? Uh, in Middle Age? Yeah, in Middle Age. Well, there's Jilbaba. And how... Okay, is that the... If that's the next... Most, if one of those is the next most powerful, where does it sit on the scale of all those other Agartha, Ermor, well, and... Ermo um, and Asphodel basically uh, in their own always banned tier. Uh huh. Okay. Right. Yeah. Like. Um. Yeah. They're they're broken. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, they're like. They... Well, we're saying broken in the hands of an experienced player, right? Yeah. If someone of course, is of course. not that good, what will happen? What you will just get rushed. But what we're explaining is about you it's advantageous for you to get rushed because you get free units the enemy keeps throwing resources and gold at you so a good player can somehow balance that attrition war into making it really unfavorable to just get attacked hmm, i see mm-hmm. that's fairly well, hard to do but with those so, nations it's highly possible but kind yeah, of like um, a, my underlying question here is, is is kind of this i did not pick shinyama with any idea how strong they were i i just picked them because actually i just played um rule the waves as japan when we first started this episode off i kind of like the idea of this weird goblin samurai type role-playing situation i thought the diplomacy might be fun i i mean i obviously didn't pick shinyama because it was like a good nation do you think that people pick their nations like marcus aurelius he's a, a pretty strong role player on his channel do you think that his choice of agartha was partly partly made because Agartha is a strong nation. Do you think that? Pretty, I mean, this is hard to say because pretty sure, <laughs> like pretty sure, if, it at least crossed his mind because he had a very typical, very strong bless for them. Okay, well, and now we can go to Sabouts though. Sabouts, I don't think he I was knew. expecting him to play Pythium. Sabouts, 
No, Marcus Aurelius. Oh, okay. Now, Sabaos took the most powerful nation, Airmore, and I think he might know less than... He knows more than I do, but he probably knows less than a lot of the other people who played the game. Maybe anybody else in the game um, besides yeah. me, basically. So he picked he picked Aramor, and I'm not sure he even knew that Aramor was that powerful. So it's hard to like hold knew. it against him that he chose the most powerful nation. But yeah. what I okay, the bottom line is, man, man's choice, I feel like was most like mine. I felt like he just chose it because it was a fun nation for him to play, and also they were kind of trying to evolve from their original early age picks. I think man, I think Das played man or whatever the equivalent was in their early no, no. no, he played Marvernia, right? <laughs> oh. Is that is, is that supposed to evolve into man or not? No, no, it turns no. into Marinon. Okay. <laughs> Marignon. Okay, that's interesting. So he didn't I thought so that, that was I, the theme. I think he chose it I think Das was similar to you in that he wanted to use knights. <laughs> hmm, okay. So. Yeah, you wanted knights of the Holy Grail, right? Yeah, yeah but unfortunately <laughs> unfortunately he uh, Yeah. He, he doesn't get that, <laughs> or he yeah, gets like, some of it. Like those are not well. Technically, they are the Knights of the Holy Grail, but it depends if you want the Arthurian Knights of the Holy Grails or if you want the Crusade Knights of the Holy Grail. I would have wanted the Monty Python Knights of the Holy Grail. So that that's. Was, I hope that was his inspiration. That's, that's man, man. <laughs> that's perfect. right. That's man. But yeah. They don't have. Yeah, they're 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 just as bad too. <laughs> no, they needed. In my opinion, they need a rabbit. They need a, a, a terror rabbit that destroys everything on the field. That's what no, they're they missing. Should, you know what they should have done? They should have summoned animals, enlarged them, and then berserk them. Then you'd have animals that never rout. <laughs> yeah, that, that would be more or less what I was considering in the Holy Grail thing. So I think that was cool. Just the point being here that I liked Man's Choice because it wasn't based on... It, the way I went into this game was not to min-max everything, not to be like, okay, let's pick the best. Da, 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 da. Although, when, as soon as Pretender's creation happens, of course, you pick somebody yep. you know, useful. But I'm pretty sure the three guys clustered near you. Um, the three main human nations, which is Man, Alm... No, well, actually, just the two human nations and you. I keep forgetting your goblins. Uh -huh. <laughs> um, but, yeah, you... Man and Ulm, I'm pretty sure we're pretty thematic. Um, I'm not sure what Spouts chose. I think he just chose it because it was cool, or yeah. people told him it was the theme, and he just went with it. Um, uh -huh. um, Vanheim, I'm pretty sure chose it because it was a strong nation. And he I just think so. I mean, that, Wade Star, he's <laughs> shown. So I had an impression of him, and we talked about this in like our off-camera discussions who is the strongest player and stuff. And like originally Dwarf Comic came up. I think that he probably is still one of the strongest players of the seven of us playing. But um, Waystar, he was supposed to be maybe somewhere in the mid. We didn't know exactly how people would play multiplayer, but Waystar was not considered the first or second, I don't think. But I think after playing, he's up there. He's, I don't know how I had like a lower impression of his play style but after this series i i think he's very talented or at least very skilled in dominions 4 i would say he overcommitted a bit in the game um especially in ermore's case uh but yeah okay so he understood the basics of anheim yeah so he and he used it mercilessly and if you guys weren't ready for, or if at least some of you weren't ready for it he probably would have swept away the game <laughs> hmm yeah, I mean, he did really well in the beginning. Obviously, he was the yeah. yeah that's um, that's uh, Van Heim's stick, though. They they do really well, and then they collapse. <laughs> huh. Well, that is exactly what happened. <laughs> um, also, it's uh, Van Heim always makes a strong impression because it's basically a rush nation. Yeah. Okay. It's, but yeah, they were still doing pretty well at the end of the game. I mean. Yeah. Um. So yeah, I mean they held Infeasible. Use stealth as much as he probably should have. Uh -huh. I agree with that one and sailing. Yeah, okay, that, yeah. that makes sense. If he used that, you probably would not you and man probably wouldn't have been able to contain him at all, honestly. Yeah, he'd be jumping around the oceans basically. He'd be jumping around the oceans, he would be sneaking into your best territories and blowing them up. <laughs> yeah. uh, that's why I kind of was happy. I think what he did is divert his efforts to Ulm. He really felt 
well, I'm speaking for him and I shouldn't do that. I believe he felt pretty betrayed by Ulm. And looking at the situation, I'm pretty sure he knew he was toast. So he decided to go to Ulm. I also think that Agartha and Vanheim, Marcus and Waystar, were working a lot closer together at the end of the game than we originally were thinking. So that might also also have played a role in Ulm, yeah, um, you know, getting decimated. You got to keep in mind, though, that there is definitely... The, the discrepancy in abilities for each nation is very evident in this game. It's 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 one of the drawbacks. It's also one of the fun parts of the game. Where... Now, what, what do you mean by that? Like, give me that quick... So, Aramore, obviously, we can see that they were, like pretty much out of the game and then came back and defeated the strongest nation with their army. So that, that I think speaks pretty clearly to how strong yeah, their yeah. nation is. And what do you um, mean about the other ones? Yeah. So, you know, you know, Vanheim, right? Mm -hmm. Vanheim made, honestly, he, he knew, how, I think he knew somewhat how to play it, but he made a lot of errors that if you start playing with Vanheim, you'll notice like he didn't recruit enough of certain kinds of mages Possibly he didn't use enough stealth, he didn't use enough sailing, but he still did, you saw, he did very, very well. So he didn't play optimally, but he did pretty much as well as you, your nation, Shinyama, when it was being played pretty close to optimally. Oh, okay. And also adding on Sam's point is that Vanheim has access to blood. Mm, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so he could have also expanded into some very nasty magics and abilities. Yes. And he who and he and the lower phone was his, right? Yep, that's what I was trying to point out there. Is he had that oh per, pretty early God. on. So he basically yes. have had squads of flying storm demons around. Yeah, so he had a lot of power actually and huh. it kind of shows that, you know, you were scram you know you know how Shinyama was scrambling, you know, and just managed to steal away steal away the major advantage near the end uh-huh um, it was it was a lot more uphill than you would have thought and vanheim could have built made it even more so okay if that that makes sense if, i would have expected I, so the bottom line here is the nations and dominions four are not well balanced so that makes it kind of a yeah. difficult game to play in multiplayer then yes <laughs> to, an extent, um, to an extent yeah because it's a fun game to play in multiplayer but i wouldn't recommend to play it you know i wouldn't say it was it's hyper competitive just because it, it breaks it breaks friendships too <laughs> <laughs> it's this game breaks this is friendships. true this, this is true yeah um but it, i would say it's kind of evident how strong it is because because you know Shinyama won, won this one, but it was because you made a lot less mistakes than everyone else. Well, what I'm going to say, this is kind of tooting my own horn, unnecessarily perhaps, but I think a lot of our success hinged on diplomacy as well. Mm -hmm. um, I don't... I, I guess that's... I'm going to have to think about that to be able to... to, to, to Gassan is alive! Yeah, yeah, he he's alive. He's still one. Oh, he 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 regenerated. Hey, Sam, yeah. he, he got he's rid of his well. disease. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, look at that. Didn't even lose a magic buff. Oh, he's a mortal. Yeah, but I thought he died in enemy dominion. No, no, no. He no, died in he what was an enemy dominion. He the positive dominion right before. Yeah, it was positive dominion. Oh, what's lucky? <laughs> right as, <laughs> right before that's they took so it over. Lucky. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we would have sent him into a Feasibor, yeah, so he would have he died for real. Unfortunately, well, for me, I thought he died for real. I was like, I was sad fish too. <laughs> no, no, no. Our, our pretender survives, which is the real reason why I think we win this game. <laughs> so, yeah, if we extended this game, I would have told you to just summon a bunch of fire lions from right there and make a new grand army. Yeah, we, well, we could now. I mean, we could just call our <laughs> fire could. things and... All right, so I'm, yeah. what I'm going to do, since we're already 40 minutes into this video, is I'm going to give each of you guys the floor to just talk about anything you want from any part in this game. It can be interactive. We can all three still discuss, but mainly just whatever you want to talk about, you have the floor. And I'm going to start with the Sam. We'll just do this kind of Sam, and then I've seen him before, and I'll conclude with any of my thoughts. So, Sam, anything you want to talk about in this game at all, the floor is yours. Is there anything you have, like... Uh, 
out of the I know you weren't here for all of it, but for as much as you were here for, or your sentiments about how the game went, or I mean, you, I think you were talking about how this is, uh, it's really a triumph that the Goblins won it all. <laughs> Anything you yeah, want. Was, yeah, um, definitely, if you actually look at this, um, if you actually look at this with some experience, you actually see, yeah, there is a lot of opportunities for you to die. <laughs> But they didn't happen partially because of diplomacy, as you mentioned, and partially because you did, you know, expanded well, and because you guys basically and everyone else was <laughs> fighting each other, <laughs> so the goblins stole victory. <laughs> I mean, I I feel like that was the plan all along was to grow without with like by but also hide our growth as much as possible i um i don't know what to say i mean it's 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 like the goblins won won using the greatest trick of all doing exactly what they said they were gonna do and this is absolutely true this is a funny thing in all my diplomatic exchanges i never once said anything that wasn't true and i didn't even imply things that weren't true I was entirely honest, which it really is. It's like sometimes they say the, um, okay, so I, I like watching StarCraft games sometimes, this competitive eSport, and in this game, it's the strategy building game, and there's a famous expression in this that the, the cheesiest thing a cheese player can do is play a long macro game, basically don't cheese, because when you're you know, everyone just expects a cheesy player to do some kind of weird strategy. And if you just do a normal strategy, it's the most mind-blowing thing. <laughs> I'm trying to say that this is kind of what a, my policy in this. Everyone expects in diplomacy you to be lying. And my tactic in this one was just not to do that at all. <laughs> Actually, that's not my tactic. That's how I prefer to do diplomacy in, like, every game I play. Because I, I really dislike, you know, the, the whole cloak and dagger thing is not... I'm, I'm not very good at it. <laughs> or well, I'm good at it, but I hate it. I don't know. So well, it worked out for you. The two people planning to backstab you stabbed each other instead. Oh, man and, and Van Heim? Heim. Yeah, they this is true. Each other. We got lucky with that. How, how did that happen? <laughs> They're going, I'm going to get him. I'm going to get him too. And they just stab each other. Well, yeah, this is because weird. Van Heim. We just pounced on the opportunity which Van Heim gave us. Like, imagine the game had gone on without Van Heim attempting to ascend. Van Heim could have just gotten bigger more powerful we would have eventually had to like go you know was, we would have taken out air more first in that case so in one sense we would have been better off but that that doesn't return very much as i seen you before already mentioned because this land is all dead so all that the, all the while vanheim would gain strength and probably would have been able to take the thrones because you'd have Ulm and agartha fighting man i don't doing god knows what probably well he couldn't have gone to war with me with he he would have made Vanheim too strong. Man was in a weird situation. He couldn't have gone to war against anybody but Vanheim because yeah, Vanheim was the strongest if nation. You, if you want to war with us, we would have uh, won the war. Say again. If you want to war with us, we would have won the war. We oh, against Man, ours. yeah. But what if it was yeah. Man and Vanheim versus us? Uh, Around turn thirty-eight, he... before the ascension attempt, let's say, before he lo Vanheim loses his army, I think Vanheim beats us. Uh, around that time, yeah. Since judging from the way we killed uh, Asphodel's Black Santos, I'd say I don't know about that. I'd like okay. to see that happen. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. That's um. Fair. Yeah. It's the the big problem with um, big pro another big problem with Vanheim was that he didn't use lots of magic. He 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 put a little too much faith in his troops. I would say. Yeah, I guess that's that was probably clear from Griffin Spires when, um, Ulm just. Iron Blizzarded his army to death, and if he had done more, even just the more thunderstorms, I think I seen him before was commenting that if he had more thunderstorms, that would have been at least closer. Yeah. Um, it's um, it'll be a learning experience for him. I think Wade Sarah will get better though if he if he wants to. He's a really fun personality to interact with, and we have to say I don't know if I've mentioned this enough. We have to tip our hat. I would say even our hat comes off for Wade Star for putting this whole game together. He was the one who initiated everything, so and he's also the one who allowed our kind of strange alliance. 
Um, yes. It was with his permission that I seen yeah. him before joins me. <laughs> yeah, so <laughs> he was really ho- hoisted by his own petard. I don't know if that's quite a, an appropriate expression, but <laughs> he could have he, he could have um, banned our like multiplayer nation going on, and then it would have been me by myself, and I would have finished much much worse off than the Nairmore. You wouldn't. You would have trouble expanding. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, okay. Expansion. I wouldn't. I can do the basic stuff, but magic. I'm just terrible with. So. Okay. So um, that said, I've seen you before. Fifty turns have gone by. You have been with me for almost all of them. You've been my chief confidant. And uh, you really helped us stay in this game. I'll, I'll obviously with Sam as well. Looking back. What is your reflection on uh, this series? I think uh, we pulled off a few great moves, especially showing that um, we can teach anyone in a situation that it is in a multiplayer. That's great for me because all of those things happened live in multiplayer. We taught how to uh, how to counter sacred units, the scary ones with uh, you know regeneration. Uh, <laughs> major quickness we still counted them and but but strategy can be used we had a lot of good battles a lot of reflection where to move all of those were really interesting and long story short i'm glad i'm glad we succeeded in our job here we achieved victory that's that's great we can all sleep peacefully at night now um <laughs> <laughs> as as implying that we weren't sleeping well before this <laughs> no 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 like just like sweats like cold sweats nightmares did, oh, we, did, win? Win? <laughs> did we win <laughs> uh, yeah so do we do we teach do we teach tortuga the wrong move and now he's going to lose his entire arm <laughs> yeah. so one of the things like i think i was getting burnt out too towards the end uh-huh. i'm happy it's finally over the one thing i I regret is that we didn't build a massive dev stack. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. That's that's the one thing. Like the mobilization was a bit abrupt and yeah. I Yeah. That's unfortunate. That was because I had to force us to split our army north and south and even the northern army never came I think together. But the, the simplest thing for us to have done would have simply have wasted a couple of turns just bunching armies together. Uh-huh. Yeah, but would probably have helped us out a lot. Yeah, um, I would say, I'll say, yeah, it's, but it worked. <laughs> it worked. <laughs> well, Still work. I, I, for my own part, I would say that this series has taught me that, uh, at least with a degree of patience, you can teach an old dog new tricks because <laughs> you guys have come in here and without the obviously without your assistance this uh series would have been a flop for me i would have kind of muscled through with diplomacy as best i could i'm sure that people would have taken pity on my poor situation you you would have been dwarf comic <laughs> uh i think so or maybe maybe not actually because my i think my early game wouldn't have been terrible um, no, no, no. I'm talking about like Dwarf Comic just rushing you with troops and he yeah, so taking you. Yeah, so one thing I wouldn't have done, I probably wouldn't have been in a position to help Ulm against Dwarf Comic. So we would have seen a, an entirely different spectrum. Yeah. Uh, and it's a different in spectrum. this timeline, Ulm time will right. ask for Dolph, destroy Shiyunama yeah. and Ulm the Dwarf world of the living. <laughs> this is a spoiler alert is like uh, if, if you guys don't join, I'm weak and Dwarf Comic actually goes on to win the game. <laughs> <laughs> goes from zero to hero from from yeah. last to first <laughs> alternate timelines yeah so that that was the first take home point for me is that uh good advisors and this i'm sure this is like this is really a quite a meta point good advisors can can basically make you look like a really smart person and i, I kind of i know that Going back to some, this is a, I don't like to talk the politics at all, but for example, I would say that a lot of people think George W. Bush, president around 2000, was not a very smart individual. But the one thing you can say that, about him is he did surround himself by very smart men. And that's kind of who I was in this series. I was the George W. Bush 
of this <laughs> Dominion's Four playthrough. <laughs> you see it. You're in the capital right now. Yeah. Go. Click so, on him. There's George W. He's Bush. Marshall. He doesn't. He hasn't aged as well as we. <laughs> <laughs> he would. anyway i so that's my take home point is um thanks to you both my like my sincere appreciation for you guys dedicating your time trying to figure out times i know like we the weird hours we were recording everything i also want to say thank you to everyone who contributed in the comments and stuff it makes this series feel more i mean you you feel like you're there's a reason for you putting on the series when people are showing like some interest in the comments, I really appreciated, and I tried to mention to both my advisors, if there was any kind of advice. I'm sure it was sorely needed at some points, especially on the turns when I wasn't joined by either of my advisors and I had to make do myself. Um, he didn't do that bad most of the time. It was just... Yeah, but mostly it was because we had kind of talked about what we might do. Oh, I guess so. So I just kind of <laughs> had to figure out how to do what we had talked about, but... Um, yeah, and then also, my third last compute con concluding point is thanks to all the people who, who played with us, because the diplomacy was a lot of fun. Um, I had like some really good moments with the Council of the Living, I had some good moments with Ulm, with Battle Moose, just sharing these like role playing things which may never even be seen like like but I especially I remember with Battle Moose we had a really fun exchange of role played stuff where uh, I don't know it was it was really cool to look back on when I was trying to do the turn I was looking at the diplomacy and I was reading through our our exchange and it was kind of fun to watch and uh, another thing is I don't know if people who watch the series really got um, to see it as much but. I was trying to do these Shinyama sayings, these Shinyama proverbs, and I dedicate a lot of time to that. Anyways, I put a lot of time into the diplomacy, and I feel like if I was dealing with a bunch of people who didn't really care about diplomacy, who weren't interested in role-playing at all, it would have been something which had fallen flat. So thanks a lot to all the different people who participated. I don't think that they'll get this far in the video, 50 minutes, but, <laughs> but still thanks to them. Um, and I have to say, I'm already like... I wasn't expecting to go back and watch anybody else's videos, but then I started, I just watched one from Das, just turn 38, I wanted to see what happened from his perspective, and then I was immediately hooked, I was like, okay, I need to go back and watch everyone's video, and then I started clicking on everyone's videos, and okay, so um, I do recommend that everyone take some time and go back and look at, especially at least for key turns, go view the, if you already haven't already, go view it from different perspectives, it's interesting to see how naive we were. And the last thing I want to conclude with um, is, I'll mention this again at the very last moment, but there will be a round table. Um, with, I think it's only with the seven of us, so I've seen you before, and Sam, I'm not sure you guys will be invited to join. It's already going to be kind of... You got this. <laughs> yeah, it's you already going to be kind of a this. Charlie this Fox and right. make vague <laughs> expressions when they say about, if they ask you how My you strategy. came up with your <laughs> <laughs> No, I think it's already going to be a Charlie Fox trot, if you know what that abbreviation is stand for. A cluster... no clue. A cluster fudge situation. Um, it's not going to be very clear with seven people how it'll be run. I think Das will run it, and hopefully he does a good job, because with seven people, I mean, we talk over each other, and this is just three people. It's more than double that amount. So it'll be difficult to actually get everyone to talk uh, in an appropriate turn, and, you know, so. Could do it. It's possible. It yeah, might take I, I mean, I'm on a podcast, a 4X podcast, and that that one uh we have we've had as many as seven people so it's doable it's just it's challenging it takes a little bit of discipline a little bit of organization um okay so let me just go back down the line uh anything uh let's see for people who haven't already checked out i seen you before's channel you're crazy what are you doing he has now started to publish a lot of content about dominions 5 and although we're already almost to an hour so we don't have time to talk about right now what i would say is just Go discuss that with Icenu4, who I think is doing the... Maybe not the... I'm not sure if he's the only person discussing Dominions 5. He might be. But if he is, um, not the only person, I should say. If he's not the only person discussing it, he's the one who's doing it in the most detail. So go check out his new videos on that um, and all his other content as you'd like. Sam, thanks so much for joining us. Uh, 
you didn't even have a channel to benefit from this. So really, it was like a, a real act of charity. <laughs> thank you, thank you so much I for see your, Dominion's you know. Four game. <laughs> yeah, we fun. see him on Dominion's Four channel over there. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Yeah. So uh, okay. So any any last words, um, Sam? Mm, the goblins steal the show. <laughs> <laughs> we did it. <laughs> I seen him before. Anything else? No, our job is done here. We can rest in peace. Uh, appropriate words, kind of a role-played ending to what was at least in part a role-played series. And that I, as well, will bid you all adieu. Thank you so much for watching this episode, this series. Thanks for being a part of it. So from Tortuga-san and his council, thanks for watching and take care. <laughs>